Hi, so I had Brooksby and Jax's video for you. So uh, I filmed a little bit of Brooksby working on that impulse control and using the flirt pole as his uh, reward. So instead of doing treats, utilizing, hey, when you're doing something, then you get to chase it. Um, he loves this thing so much. Um, so if you have one at home, um, I would definitely try using it during your training sessions with him. Um, and again, you're going to ask him for a sit. You can use your hand signals to help him focus. And then once he does it, then he gets to chase the flirt for a second. Um, I try to let him get it every once in a while. And then after about 10 seconds of him chomping on it is when it's time to let go. Now, when he starts pulling on you, one thing I want to note is I just ask him Brooksby, Brooksby and then if he's still kind of tug tug, I give him an uh-uh and I'll leave it. Um, usually by then he drops it out of his mouth and that's where I'll ask him, what is the positive I want you to do instead? Um, so whether that is a sit right here, for example, or if it's a go onto a place command. But this helps with disengagement. This helps with his focus, um, that we can be in a high active state, but then we can disengage. Now, I pulled out the treats because he was getting a little too excited. Um, so we worked on some place commands and some big releases. I'm also using a lot more body pressure with him just to help his... Uh, <laughs> um, confidence with people. Now I did do some play, uh, and be, try to be goofy. And I also was targeting that jumping. Um, so anytime that he jumps up to me, I immediately stop and then we go back to play and redirect and try it again. Um, we really had a good session today. Like he was really open to things. He was really willing to do things. It's always funny to me when I see clients in their homes or in different environments. And then I come back to our training environment. There is a kind of like an aha moment for the dog. And usually when we start doing our private lessons, um, within a week, there's an aha moment with you guys where they're like, oh, okay, I get this. So um, I'm really curious to see how this week and, and next week goes for you guys um, with Brooksby specifically. And then as we work with Jack, hopefully get Jack's clicked on um, with behaviors. So now uh, this is when you dropped off Jax. I had put Brooks back in his room and Jax and I were just working on some body pressure and leash pressure. So it's more of, I feel pressure. If I come to you, I get a treat. And he was actually taking treats for me. So this is actually kind of a big milestone. Usually he would only take treats when uh, Brooksby was in the room. This was the first time that he was taking treats from me, just him and I, which is a huge accomplishment. Um, we worked on some place commands and then uh, down a little bit further in the video, you're going to see us working on our kennel work. Um, I just wanted to see if he'd load in and come out. And every time he did come out, I gave him a big reward, um, which for the most part he took. Um, also, I apologize the camera. I got a fancy new toy that's supposed to follow you as you film and it got a little crazy. So I do apologize if it swivels weirdly for a second. Um, now I did startle him by accident. Um, I touched his butt. He had a momentary freak out. So this is kind of a quick clip of us just decompressing. So I'm sitting on the ground. I'm at his level where he usually feels a lot more comfortable. And, um, I mean, I'm giving him the smallest, tiny bite-sized pieces and he's willing to come to me and check it out. Um, I asked him for a sit, he engaged, but I just wanted to, sometimes it's about, okay, we pushed it too far. How to re reset in, in that moment. And again, like I said earlier, this is where we did some kennel work. Um, it's not a full wire kennel. He can only see out of one side instead of all the other sides. Um, we do have a wire kennel that we can practice, but this is something that our, um, what we call central, where all of our daycare dogs go into. Um, actually, this is what Brooksby goes into in his room with the daycare room. Um, we've been working on his, uh, I don't think I've really mentioned it, but we work on his seeing other dogs walk past. We hear the dogs barking um, and we keep every day 
day practice on integration with the daycare. So he goes in with the daycare yard for little bits at a time just to get him more comfortable as he does this. Um, so I'm trying to get Jackson to have the same routine so we can learn, hey, this is a good environment. Now, when I had both boys together, I was trying, <laughs> trying being the optimum word, I was trying to work on one dog be on place, the other dog gets to get the flirt pole, get to walk around, get to do whatever they want to do. Um, I had a little bit of failure here, so I like to include it in the videos that sometimes even I struggle with what I'm asking the dogs to do. Um, so here for the most part, I'm doing pretty well and I accidentally like, not bop Jax with the flirt pole, but I'm trying to see if he'll tolerate his brother being crazy around him. Now at home, I know there's no question, but here with me, I was trying to build up that trust of like, okay, can you be on Dog Island and still do what I'm asking you to do? For the most part, he did pretty well, um, but there's a couple moments where you're like, oh, yep, <laughs> let's do that again. Now I do switch and do Brooksby uh, a little bit with it too, just to see if I can get him focused. But today was a really good day. I hope you guys have a great weekend.